Welcome to the Bohr model of the atom. So far we've described the evolution of atomic theory up through Rutherford's model. And in this video we're going to look at Niels Bohr's contribution to our understanding of the atom. In 1913 a Danish physicist named Niels Bohr uh, improved on Rutherford's model because there was some phenomenon that Rutherford's model of the atom could not explain. Uh, in particular, Bohr improved upon Rutherford's model by specifically describing the behavior and position of electrons in the atom. He said electrons are only found traveling in fixed orbits that are at set distances from the nucleus and have set amounts of energy. So how did he come up with this idea of orbits? Well, he was trying to explain some phenomenon, one of which is called an emission spectra. So as it turns out, if you take hydrogen gas and you run a current through it, it emits a certain array of colors. And here we have the bands of light that hydrogen gives off. It gives off a purple color, a bluish purple color, a teal color, and a red band. These are actual colors that are emitted by the hydrogen. Another example is when a metal is heated, it typically takes on different colors until it becomes white hot. It's giving off a very bright white light. Uh, but it goes through a series of emissions of different colors before it gets to that stage. So Rutherford's model didn't really explain where any of these colors were coming from, and Bohr determined that it had to do with the electrons and the position of electrons. So let's take a look at his model. So in Bohr's model, we have a tiny nucleus in the middle, the dense nucleus, just like in Rutherford's, and we have orbits that are at set distances away from the nucleus. Now each of these orbits represents a fixed amount of energy, a specific amount of energy, and all electrons on one of these orbits would have that amount of energy. So in the first one, let's say I have two electrons, these little purple dots are my electrons, each one of these electrons would have exactly the same amount of energy because they were on the same orbit. Now the orbit closest to the nucleus is the lowest energy. The further away you get from the nucleus, so like this orbit or the third orbit, the further away you get from the nucleus, the more energy is contained in those orbits. So an electron on this orbit would have more energy than an electron on the first orbit. Now it's important to mention here that electrons cannot exist floating around between two orbits. So how does this explain the colors given off by hydrogen? Let's label these orbits so that we can refer to them more easily. The first orbit is always called n equals 1. The second orbit is referred to as n equals 2. And the third orbit is referred to, as you might guess, n equals 3. So, we have an electron on the first orbit here, n equals 1. How is it going to get to n equals 2? Well, there's a specific amount of energy at n equals 2, and a specific amount of energy at n equals 1. So, if this electron gets hit by a photon of light, okay, that's an amount, that's energy, okay, a photon of light is energy. If that photon that has the exact right amount of energy hits this electron, it will become excited from all that extra energy and jump up to the next level. Now, in this excited state, the electron is unstable and it will eventually fall back down. When it does fall back down, it's going to release all that energy as light. So where do all these colors come from? Well, a certain drop gives off a certain color. If I instead had an electron on the third level and it dropped down to and it dropped down to the first level, it would give off a different color light. So what does an electron need to be excited in the first place? It needs a specific amount of energy that's called a quantum. Okay? A quantum is an amount of energy. So an electron needs this amount of energy or a quantum, okay, a, sp a specified amount of energy to be excited to a higher orbit in Bohr's model. If an electron does not receive the right quantum of energy, okay, it does not receive the right amount of energy, it will not be able to jump up. It will not be able to absorb it because an electron, as we said before, can't exist in between these orbits. Just like you can't stand on the space between steps on a ladder, an electron can't stay in the space between orbits. Bohr's model was able to successfully explain the colors that hydrogen emits. 
However, it only works for hydrogen and a couple of other elements. It did not do a good job of explaining anything else. So in the next video, we'll see how Bohr's model gets taken one step further to really explain all cases. That wraps up our lesson on Bohr's model of the atom. Any questions you have from this lesson, make sure you write them in your notes and bring them with you to class.